Now let's talk about the execution context in JavaScript. This is actually a concept in most programming languages. When there is a function that's called, it is always called in a particular context. Uh, in a lot of the classical programming languages, there is something like a stack trace, right? So there is a stack of variables which, which kind of contain the values for different scopes that have been a part of the call chain. And there are a bunch of other stuff, the information that it maintains. But the idea is that there is some context, some group of data, which helps the execution of a particular function. And the function might sometimes need to refer to it. So JavaScript also has an execution context. Uh, and uh, the contents of that execution context really depend on the method in which the function is called in any one of these four ways. And one of the variables, one of the elements of that execution context is a variable called this. If you've been working with JavaScript or if you've seen some of my other courses on JavaScript, you will know that there is an implicit argument to any function execution and that argument is called this. There are actually two arguments. One is called arguments and one is this. For the purposes of this conversation, we're gonna lo just look at the argument this. So anytime you make a function execution, there is always an implicit argument called this. Anytime you write a function, you can use the this variable and it'll always point to something. What that thing is really depends on which one of these methods you're using. However, once the function call has been identified, the value of this is very predictable. In fact, the specification outlines what the value of this should be for various different approaches of function calls. So given a way in which you call a function, it's very easy to predict the value of this. So let's identify those different values one by one. We'll start with the method one. I'm gonna clear all these things out. Uh, I'm executing a function as a simple function object directly. Now, when a function is executed like this, using this first approach, the value of the this keyword is the global object, okay? So in JavaScript, there is a concept of the global object, and the global object itself depends on the runtime environment you're using. If you're running JavaScript in a browser, the global object is a window object, which represents the window or the tab that is actually running the JavaScript code. If you're running it in Node.js, there is an object called global, which is the global object. So the global object itself depends on the runtime environment that is running the JavaScript code. But the fact is there is a, an object called the global object. And when you execute a function using this approach, just calling the function directly, then there is a this reference that gets created when the function is being executed and that this reference points to that global object. So let's validate that by doing console.log of this. And now if I execute this, you're gonna see hello printed, which is this console.log and the second console.log is printing this, which as you can see here is a window reference. So this is the first way in which you can call functions, just calling the function as is. And in this case, this refers to the global object. Okay, okay, let's move on. Let's look at the second approach. I'm gonna put this back in here. Now the second approach is to create an object and then have a property on the object, which is the function, right? And I'm calling the function as a property of that object. This is method two. All right, so I'm gonna again clear out the other stuff which could distract us. I'm just gonna leave this method two. All right, so now I have this way of calling a function which is another one of the four different ways in which you can call functions in JavaScript. Now the question is what is the value of the this reference here? Well, it turns out if you're calling a function in the context of an object, then when that function is called, the this reference is actually referring to that object itself. So I'm saying object dot foo, when I'm calling the function, this refers to this object instance whose property is the function I'm calling. All right, so I can, I can print console.log of this, and uh, this time it should be the instance obj. All right, so let me clear this out and uh, reload and run, we have, OBJ getting printed. 
to really validate that, I'm, I can add another property here called prop. And then this is the object itself. All right, just to make sure that we are actually referring to the right object, I can run this. So I have a property, I have an object called obj, which has a property called prop with this string. And then it has a property called foo, which gets created because of this line. And I'm calling that object dot foo. And when foo gets called, which is this function that gets called, this refers to this obj, okay? It refers to this object. All right, let's reload and run and verify that it is the object itself. And in this case, in this approach, this refers to the object whose property is the function that I'm calling. So I'm calling a function as an object ref object property reference. So I'm calling this in the context of an object. That's what this is in the case of method two. All right, again, putting the code back. And now let's look at what happens if I call foo using new. This is something we've already learned. In this case, whenever you call a function using the new keyword, this always refers to the newly created object. So whenever you attach a new in front of a function, what the JavaScript interpreter does is it creates a new object on the fly. It creates it at that time and assigns it to the this reference. So when you are executing the function using the new keyword, then the this reference in that function will point to that newly created object. Again, I'm gonna clear all this other stuff out so that it doesn't distract us. All right, so this is approach three. I have a function and I'm calling it using the new keyword. If I were to say console.log of this, what should get printed? You remember when you call a new keyword, there are two lines that implicitly get added. Var this equals an empty object. And then at the end, return this. So in this case, the value of this should be obvious. It is an empty object. All right, let's validate that by clearing this out. Reload and run, and there you go. It's an empty object. So in the third way of calling functions, the value of this is an empty object when you use the new keyword. All right, so I'm gonna put everything back to the way it was. So these are the three methods that we've seen so far of calling functions, and we've seen how the this value gets changed for each way of calling the function. So to summarize, in method one, calling a function as is, this refers to the global. Method two, calling a function in the context of an object, this refers to that object whose property you're calling. Method three, when you're calling using a new keyword, this refers to the newly created object. All right, so now, is it a good time to talk about method four? Well, unfortunately not yet. So before we get to method four, I need to show you a practical use case of using the this keyword and I'm gonna highlight a particular problem and tell you a solution to it, which happens to be the fourth way of calling a function. We'll learn more about that in the next tutorial.